What's up everybody, Venom here with a quick guide on Pal World. Let's get right into it. This video was actually requested on one of my other videos, so I figured why not cover it if people are asking the question. Again, another spoiler warning before I get into the video, if you do not want to see any content that is very late game, I suggest you do not watch this video because there will be some late game and some early game content that you might want to find on your own. And if that is the case, then I suggest you do not watch this video and come back to it when you are at this point. Without further ado, Let's continue. Today we will be discussing the wildlife sanctuaries that are found around the map inside of Pal World. There are three sanctuaries total, and one of them is going to be number one, the second is going to be number two, and the third is going to be number three. So they are literally wildlife sanctuary one, two, and three. Wildlife Sanctuary number one is probably the first one that you're going to see if you started in the Plateau of Beginnings, just because it's kind of hard to miss if you just like look off the coast, you can see these giant spikes sticking out of the water. And when I first saw them, I wasn't sure what they were. So I just started to try to swim towards them and I realized that was not going to happen. I was not going to make it. My stamina was just not good enough. And that's because in order to get to any of these three wildlife sanctuaries, you are going to need a flying mount or a swimming mount. So you need a pal that you can create a saddle for and either ride into the water or fly across the water. Once you have one of those pals in order to get to these wildlife sanctuaries, they are going to be home to several higher tier, I guess you would say, pals. And when you're over there, there's also going to be this fun little banner that shows up right on your screen when you dismount that says criminal activity. And basically what that means is you're conducting criminal activity. That's what it means. You are literally committing a crime by being on the sanctuary because it's not meant for you to go and collect pals. This is quite literally an animal sanctuary, a pal sanctuary, and you are not supposed to be there. And when you're there, you're going to be hunted down like a rabid dog if you grab a pal and you're caught, which has happened to me. And these men will chase you. They will chase you all the way back to your base. They will chase you everywhere. And the fun part is they get higher and higher level if you keep killing them until they can kill you. So fun fact, just be careful when you're there not to get spotted by the infantry that are going to be kind of scattered around these sanctuaries. So if you're okay with possibly getting spotted and having to try to get back to your body, then I suggest coming here to find some cool new wildlife, new pals. So the sanctuary number one is going to be the lower level pals. So it's going to be around the 15s to 25 range is the highest that I have seen them in level. Um, so it's going to be like the easier sanctuary to collect these pals. Now, what pals can you find at sanctuary number one? So first and foremost, you're going to see a lot of pen king. I have seen pen king everywhere on this island in abundance. You're also going to see the azure robes, which are the pretty little snake-like creatures. Patalia, um, who is one of the grass type creatures. Grizzbolt, who is the boss that you might remember from the rain tower. And the Veilet, which is another boss, which is located kind of on the northeastern side of the map as well as the Elphidrin, and you will also see the Eichthyr, Eichthyr deer, uh, Terra, which is the gold kind of colored version of the deer that you probably know throughout the uh, Plateau of Beginnings, because they are the purple deer with the giant antlers. Um, you're going to see those over here as well. And what about Sanctuary number two? What pals can you run into over there? There is Verdash, which is another one of the bosses. King Paka can be found there as well. Incineram Noct, Wumpo Batan, Menesting, Warsect, Quivern, and my personal favorite, Jormantide Ignis. Now, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that is my personal favorite. The pal is extremely powerful and is one of my personal favorites. As for Sanctuary number three, you will be able to find Bushi, which is another boss, Fengalope, Blazamut, Astagon, Lylene, Phalaris, which is the flying hawk boy that you'll see around there, Ozark, Shadowbeak, and another Incineram Noct. It appears that Sanctuary 2 and Sanctuary 3 have the pals in the 40s, so it's between level 40 and level 50. That's what I have seen thus far in those two different sanctuaries. 
you are absolutely not going to want to go to either of these unless you have very strong pals and you yourself are pretty upgraded with at least refined metal armor and a giga shield and I suggest a gun for sure. Whether it's the makeshift or the actual handgun itself, I definitely suggest having a good weapon on you as well. Make sure to dodge attacks because they hurt and dodging them is the best way to not take damage and damage your armor even less while you're getting attacked by pals. And again, remember the pals are not the only enemies over here. There are also the guards that run around and will catch you at some point if you hang around for too long. You can also find chests and ore and sometimes pal souls, things like that over on these sanctuaries as well. But I think the main idea of these sanctuaries was to be able to try to sneak over there and catch some of the more elusive and more powerful pals. Jormantide Ignis is absolutely one of those powerful pals. I was surprised that Jet Dragon wasn't on one of these sanctuaries. I have yet to see Jet Dragon over there. I think the only way to get Jet Dragon is by actually killing the boss itself. Um, I think that's the only way thus far. I was shocked that um, Jet Dragon was not over on one of these because that would have been cool. That would have been a great way to grab a couple of them because it is the fastest uh, flying mount currently, I'm pretty sure, in Pal World. Don't quote me on that, but I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that Jet Dragon is the fastest flying pal currently, especially if you can get two of them and breed them until you get Swift or Runner on one of them. Absolutely going to be very fast. I would not suggest going to any of these sanctuaries unless you are level 25 and above, just for the sheer fact that some of them can be in the 30s or the low 20s, and I would just suggest not to go over there when you're not ready. And again, you will still need a flying mount or a swimming mount, so keep that in mind as well, because some of those saddles can be a little bit difficult to craft. I personally use my Ragnarok just because it was easy for me to get in the desert area. I can do a guide on different flying mounts and their capabilities. I might do that in the future, but this one was requested. So I just wanted to get this out into the ether and help everybody kind of understand sanctuaries and what pals you can find on those sanctuaries. So the locations are going to be as follows. Sanctuary 1 is going to be near the Plateau of Beginnings to the south, I guess you would call it, southwest area of the map right here. You pretty much just go straight down from this tiny little island right here, fly swim straight down to the sanctuary number one. So this is sanctuary number one. Sanctuary number two, on the other hand, is going to be on the northwestern part of the map right over here. And this one has a waypoint that's actually pretty close to it, the Forgotten Islands waypoint. If you have this, I suggest taking this and then swimming and or flying across to sanctuary number two. Again, this is sanctuary number two, so we're scaling up. Now, sanctuary number three is probably the most difficult and most annoying one to get to for a few reasons. This one is located way above the desert and Again, it's the desert, so it's going to get extremely hot during the day. If you want to get over there, you're going to need your heat-resistant armor, but if you get trapped over there before you can get home, before nighttime hits, it is going to get freezing. So my personal thing that I like to do is I like to carry both sets of armor on me. So I have my heat-resistant armor, and then I also have my cold resistant armor because I never know what I'm going to get caught in and I would just rather be safe than sorry and not end up stuck there when it gets below freezing temperatures or if it's extremely hot and my character starts taking damage. But this one can be found up here. If you have the waypoint for the PIDF tower, I highly suggest using that waypoint and then flying and or swimming across to this one as well. And it is kind of out in the open water. It's definitely, it feels further than the other ones. I don't know if that's true. I just feel like it was the furthest one out for sure. And again, this is the highest tier, I'm gonna assume. So uh, since it's sanctuary number three, so definitely do not go there unprepared. And that's gonna do it for this guide. As always, if you like the video, then like the video. And if you like my content in general, then please subscribe to my channel because it means the absolute world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!